fracture of the clavicle. Now, see here. What type of bone is clavicle first? What type of bone? What is the classification? Anyone? Okay. Now, clavicle has a, another name. Okay. You're right. It's called a beauty bone. But uh, that is not the classification. This is just a synonym. Classification means long bone, short bone, flat bone, and irregular bone. Isn't it? These are the four important types of classification. So it looks uh, type, looks like a long bone. It's a elongated type of bone, which has got two end and the shaft. Now, it is a very uniquely placed in our body. Okay, it is transversely located on the pectoral girdle. And the function of this clavicle is it connects, okay, it connects the shoulder area with the sternum. Sternum is a midline bone in our thoracic cavity. And pectoral or shoulder girdle is the upper part of the area of the upper limb. So clavicle connects these two areas and it is lying transversely. Now it has got three parts the proximal part, the middle part, and the distal part. Okay, so let me explain this with the help of a picture here. I'll come back again. Now see this? Look at, look at this picture, then it will be easy for you. Now see here. So this is the clavicle bone. So this is the medial one third. This is middle one third. And this is the lateral one third. This medial one third is also known as proximal one third. Middle one third and distal one third. So don't get confused, okay? Proximal means towards the, uh, towards the sternum. Lateral means towards the scapula. So we roughly divide clavicle into three parts. Middle one third, middle one third, and the lateral one third. Now, Look at the incidence of fracture here. The most common site for the fracture clavicle is the middle one third. Almost 80% of the fracture occurs at that site. Probably that area acts like a junction between the two parts of the clavicle. That's why it is very commonly fractured. Lateral is second, almost 15% okay, chance of fracture there, and medial, just 5%. Now, this is a good thing. If fracture occurs in the medial part of the clavicle, there is high chance of complication. There may be damage to the neurovascular bundle. Okay, so uh, fortunately, it is just 5% in the incidence. Now, let's go back. Now, see this. This clavicle fracture is very common in children. And also in adult, but children are very commonly affected. And this fracture unites also very rapidly and usually without any complication. Regarding the mechanism of fracture of clavicle, see this, fall on shoulder, okay, is the most common mechanism. Fall on the shoulder from a height probably. Direct trauma to the clavicle, sometimes we call it stick injury. Okay, direct hit on the clavicle or the beauty bone. And another important mechanism is, okay, fall on outstretched hand. This is the short form. See this, fall on outstretched hand. This is a very commonly used short form in orthopedic practice. So it, it uh, is responsible for almost 6% of the clavicle fracture. So the most important is fall on the shoulder. Now, what are the clinical features here? There is severe pain at that area. The child doesn't allow to touch that area. That is important one. And the child doesn't, uh, you know, uh, move that shoulder. One important point is tenting of the skin. Tenting of the skin. Now, remember, what is the mechanism of this tenting of the skin? Clavicle is transversely located or lying bone. When it is fractured in the middle, which is the most common site, 
there is displacement of the fracture okay pieces displacement now let me show you about that displacement now see this this picture all of you please focus here now here is the sternum okay this is manubrium sternae this is called body of the sternum and here is the gif gifoid process of gif sternum okay and this is a clavicle so here there is a fracture you can clearly see so this is the you know the medial part of the fractured bone and this is the lateral part of the fractured bone and here is the fracture site so because of the attachment of sternocleidomastoid muscle on this area it will pull this this segment upward it will pull this segment or fractured piece upward clear because of the effect of the gravity see this this arm is attached here because of the effect of the gravity or weight of the arm this fragment or the lateral fragment is pulled downward so when this piece is going upward it will okay it will form a tent on the skin exactly at that site and we can see it as a rounded bulge there you can clearly see it this is a very important clinical feature of a fracture of the clavicle now another important clinical feature is arm is clasped to the chest to splint shoulder and prevent movement means the person will will you know support that you know particular arm with the help of another arm or another hand regarding the classification of clavicle fracture that's the classification you have already seen just now this is called elman classification it is known as type 1 or a okay type 2 or type b type 3 or type c classification so type 1 or a is the most common type because it occurs in the middle third of the clavicle almost 80% of the time type 2 or b occurs on the distal third of the clavicle or the or you can also call it lateral end of the clavicle around 15% and it is also divided into two type now coraco clavicular ligament intact is b type 1 and coraco clavicular ligament ruptured is b type 2 this coraco is is a term for coracoid process of the scapula okay so there is a ligament uh, connected between coracoid process and the clavicular uh, clavicle or the lateral end of the clavicle so this is the ligament we are talking now type 3 or c occurs in the medial third and this is only 5% but if it occurs there is high chance of complication now this slide is showing those different types of mechanism of injury see this direct blow to the shoulder fall on to the shoulder and fall with arm okay out stretch on to the hand fall on out stretch hand it is called fush okay in the short form so direct blow fall on the shoulder and fush injury these are the different mechanism now look at this picture here okay what can you see what can you see here in this in this picture yes here is a bulging metacarpal fracture of bulge exactly there is a very good there is a bulge see this this is a bulge this is a bulge you can also call it tenting or the bulge here this is highly suggestive of clavicle fracture and this patient is also complaining of pain tenderness decreased movement and usually this uh, this arm is supported with another arm or another hand and this is the x ray see this if we take the x ray it it exactly looks like this this is a fracture on the middle third of the clavicle and this is the medial part of the fractured bone this is the lateral part of the fractured bone so i already told you the medial part is displaced upward because of the pull of sternocleidomastoid muscle and the lateral part is pulled downward 
probably because of latissimus dorsi and even more important than that is the effect of the gravity or weight of the arm so this is the typical type of displacement now another okay uh, uh, x ray look at the typical displacement of the fracture clavicle see this the bone is going upward this is the medial fragment and the lateral fragment is going downward and see this there, there is one extra piece also there okay one another piece of the bone is there now what are the associated injury with clavicle fracture is it a serious type of fracture or not now let's analyze it up to 9% of the time the clavicle fractures are associated with other fracture like rib fracture it depends on what is the mechanism of injury if it is a severe type of injury there probably other bones are also fractured and majority of brachial plexus injury are associated with proximal third fracture i told that repeatedly okay in this class proximal third fracture is medial third fracture because those blood vessels and brachial plexus are quite there very near to that area so there is high chance of injury now how to treat a case of clavicle fracture now let's talk about it in the beginning before uh, we go for the treatment we have to evaluate okay the neurovascular structure of the entire upper arm or upper limb our upper limb is supplied by brachial plexus brachial plexus may be damaged here that's why you need to examine okay uh, the uh, sensation the motor function of the upper limb another one the axillary uh, artery is right there the axillary artery okay so that axillary artery also may be damaged sometimes so that take a pulse which is distal to that area what about the brachial pulse what about the radial pulse if they are fine what about the capillary capillary refill time if they are fine then you are not too much worried that about the neurovascular structure now in case of medial and middle third of clavicle fracture how we are going to treat see this medial and middle third of clavicle fracture we uh, put the patient on figure of 8 sling for 1 to 2 week figure of 8 sling you will see that in the picture it is very easy after that early range of motion and strengthening exercise should be done once pain subside if ends overlap by more than 2 cm we should consider for orif what is orif what is the full form of orif Open reduction, open reduction, and fixation. Excellent, excellent. Open reduction and internal fixation. This is a very commonly used term in orthopedic surgery. Orif means surgery. You know, you open that place or area and then fix it with the help of some wire. This is called orif. But this is not you know very commonly needed. The figure of eight sling would be enough. in case of distal third of clavicle fracture now we have got uh, two types if coraco clavicular ligament is injured or intact accordingly you are going to treat on displaced distal third clavicle fracture with ligaments intact now, this is a uncomplicated situation so we need to go for sling treatment for one to two week that would be enough but if it is a displaced and with a ligament injury you have to go for orif open reduction and internal fixation now see this this is known as figure of eight uh, you know bandages sling and figure of eight bandages this is a, a sling okay see that this is a figure of eight bandages when we look from the anterior side also it it may look like see from the anterior because of the sling this uh, part of the eight cannot be seen properly but it exactly uh, looks like this on the anterior side also 
So this is a very good support for the fractured bone. Now, what are the complications of clavicle fracture? Every student can answer this now. Number one is a cosmetic bump. Many of the time, that is the only complication, nothing else, because the chances of a damage to the brachial plexus or the blood vessels are very rare. Okay, very rare. Another one is a shoulder stiffness. Importantly, if physiotherapy is not done. And pneumothorax, brachial plexus injury, and subclavian vessel injury or axillary vessel injury, all, all are very rare. All are very rare. Now, if pneumothorax is there, how do you treat? How do you treat that pneumothorax if, if it happens? We can inject the injection. space. Exactly. Good. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, try to revise this point because it's such an important one. That's why. Okay, so you, you put a needle in the second intercostal space in mid clavicular line first, uh, remove that ear or allow that ear to go out, and then put a chest tube later on. 